My name is David Sanders. I'm a professor in the Faculty of Sciences at the National University of Mexico in Mexico City and currently a visiting professor in the mathematics department at MIT. Hello, my name is Dr. James Schloss. I recently got my PhD from the Okinawa Institute of Science and Technology in December 2019, and since then I've been working at MIT on the Klima project. I'm Professor Alan Edelman, and behind me here is my uh, colleague and co-professor for this class, Philip de Corgi, who's sleeping on the floor. My name is Grant Sanderson. I run a YouTube channel called Three Blue and Brown. I'm a computational applied mathematician. That's what I do research in. For example, in chaotic dynamical systems, models of epidemic propagation, very relevant right now, and um, global optimization using interval arithmetic methods. In addition to Klima, I also have a whole bunch of online platforms that I develop content for. For example, my YouTube channel, Leos OS, my Twitch stream, Simuleos, and also my online educational book, I guess you could call it, The Arcane Algorithm Archive, which is an attempt to cover as many algorithms as we can in as many languages as possible. Mainly, I give, um, I guess, animated lectures about math and topics that are tangential to math in some way. And based on the topics I cover and the way that I illustrate it, a lot of what I do ends up sitting right at that intersection between math and computer science. And I couldn't be more pleased to be teaching a course on computational thinking. I think these four, five folks are the best in modern education, and so you're in for a real, real treat. Just as a kind of welcoming message, I'd like to give a little bit of my philosophy about, uh, about computational thinking. And I like to think about disciplines. You know, I'm in the math department, there's mathematics, there's computer science, um, there are application domains like climate science. Uh, we want to do something that was kind of unifying. We reject the hypothesis that you have to study all the math before you can experience a computation. Indeed, I believe that experience with a computation helps facilitate the math, so I'm kind of turning that around. Now, when you look at the syllabus of this course, um, at first it might seem kind of like a random grab bag of topics. We've got image processing and ray tracing, and then units in epidemic modeling and climate science, but there is actually a rhyme and reason to it all. The first arc is on images and matrix manipulation, which should give students an intuitive feel for, for example, filters and stuff like that, like you'd see in Snapchat. The second arc is on time stepping and ray tracing, maybe building into a black hole simulation, who knows, we'll see. After that, we're gonna move on to epidemic modeling, where we'll talk about random walks and also a bit of network theory, and then we'll put it all together into a unique application at the end, which will be for climate science. The motive behind each of these topics is to teach some kind of transferable skills that involve a mixture of math and science and computation, but that we can teach in a way that's blended together. And the first unit is all about arrays and dealing with array and matrix type data. And after that, talking about, again, images, but in a way that's heavily parallelizable, and maybe we can talk a little bit about parallelization. Um, and then epidemic modeling involves thinking about time series and networks, um, differential equations. Uh, and then climate science, that's going to basically bring all of these together. May I tell you about the Julia technology that will fuel this course? Julia is a programming language, you know, like Java, Python, C++, but Julia is fast, or can be fast. It's really, really fast. And yet it's easy on the human. More importantly, for me, Julia is composable. This means that programs written by a group over here can readily be used by another group over there. In 2014, I switched completely to using Julia 100% for both teaching and research. Previously, I was using C++ and Python, uh, but I just ditched those and switched completely to Julia. And since then, I've been creating quite a lot of tutorials on how to do scientific computing or computational science using Julia, many of which can be found on YouTube and on my GitHub profile. So having previously struggled with the sort of cumbersome way in which other programming languages make you twist what you want to say, what you want to write, I found Julia to really be a breath of fresh air that made it just easier, faster, and more natural to write code in the way that you think about it, the way that you want to say it. It's kind of amazing to find out about a component in Europe interacting with another component at MIT with another one in Southeast Asia. And it's happening naturally by scientists for science and you know, not through some deliberate management, just, nat just, just through natural human development. So Julia is now getting the best algorithms, the best AI, and what's most wonderful is it right now is the best people. Julia's young and it's fresh, so go out and enjoy it with the mathematics and the applications that will change the world. This class will let you be able to join the club. So the hope with this course is that each one of these topics has a concrete transferable skill, and that moreover, the way that we teach it, where we're trying to blend together the computation and the science and the math, 
as kind of a cohesive unit rather than three separate things, um, that that's something you can also take to whatever you're doing later, where you're bringing those three things together as a cohesive whole. This is going to be a really interesting course, and it's the first time any of us have really taught anything like this, where we're using the power of the open internet in order to teach a rigorous course for MIT students, and in addition, anyone who wants to take it online.